We're very pleased that lots of you tune into our show each week, and we know that a growing number of you link to our stories on the America's Heartland website. And lots of you tell us that it's great to have your favorite stories just a mouse click away. Like this one in Louisiana, where farming has been a part of the picture for some two centuries. That's just the way you feel like you are. You're a caretaker of the old house and a, and a steward of the soil. You pass it on to the next generation, hoping they'll take it another notch up. Farms like personal fortunes are often subject to the whims of fate. History treats some with kindness, others with callous disregard. Lloyd Hall in central Louisiana has experienced both neglect and renewal over the past 190 years. Its renaissance began in 1948 when the 640-acre parcel was purchased by the Fitzgerald family. Well, we, we moved here when I was uh, nine years old, and my dad bought it strictly for the land. The house was not even mentioned in the purchase agreement because well, the old home was in such disrepair, and it was a liability, actually. The rich, sandy clay soil provided fertile ground for the cotton and soybean crops grown there. But so bad was the vacant house that chickens and goats roamed the halls and hay was stored in the front room. It's an amazing testament to the construction of these old homes that they could survive all of that. And then people come in and be able to, with lots of elbow grease and time and effort, restore them to the original beauty. This 640-acre farm is intact, the same size as it was when William Lloyd started his plantation in the early 1800s. He was known as the black sheep of the famous Lloyds of London family, banished to America and even told to drop an L out of the family name. Lloyd was a successful farmer. Mules would pull flatboats filled with his cotton bales up the nearby bayou to be shipped to New Orleans. Unfortunately, William Lloyd's political alliances were not as successful as his farming efforts. Supposedly, the stories we've heard he was a Yankee sympathizer during the Civil War, and that's why the house is still standing. And once the troops marched through, the neighbors put him under house arrest for three days, and then they hanged him in a tree in the front yard. After the last of the Lloyds passed away in 1872, the house went through more than two dozen owners. But throughout the whole period of time, from the very beginning through today, it has been in continuous agricultural production, which is a phenomenon to me. Today, Lloyd Hall is a bed and breakfast. They can't get over this, this homey feel that they get here. They just feel at home when they come here. It's not like a museum or anything. They just feel like they're, they're at home. There's no one that visits here almost without fail, be they from Europe or across the United States, that doesn't share with us some reminiscence of being on a farm, being out in the country, and a lot of similarities. You know, there are always wonderful stories that we have a common thread. For families whose ancestors include those who work the land, Lloyd Hall seems a place that awakens the dormant roots of our agrarian past. It is also a living reminder of a time both noble and tragic, a time of gentility and struggle, a glimpse of the Old South that this family has captured for others to experience and enjoy. The word plantation is usually associated with large homes and farms in the American South, but there were plantations outside the U.S. as well. England had sugarcane plantations all across the Caribbean, and the early Romans are said to have had similar expansive farms for wine and olive oil. Plantations were long associated with colonial expansion, with rubber and tea plantations in many parts of Asia. 